Good morning, church. Today's scripture reading is taken from James 3, 13 to 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by the good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitty envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in the peace, who sow in peace, reap a right, harvest of righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Invite us, friends, to stand for the reading of the Gospel. Holy Gospel is taken from the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 24th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Matthew chapter 16, reading from verse 24 to verse 28. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels and will then repay every man according to his deeds. Truly I say to you, There are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let's bow our heads and pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Please be seated, my friends. We bid you welcome when we continue our study of the book of James uh, today, uh, James chapter 3, verse 13 to 18, and then we look at the idea of wisdom. In this passage of scripture, uh, James pivots to talking about wisdom, about what is good wisdom, bad wisdom, right, for us as we walk through our lives. Uh, all of us in our world today uh, know what wisdom is, and Isaac Asimov says that the saddest aspect of life right now is that science gathers knowledge faster than society gathers wisdom. Doug Larson, Doug Larson, a columnist, says, Wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you would have preferred to talk. And Theodore Levitt, experience comes from what we have done. Wisdom comes from what we have done badly. Right? And we all understand this. In our world today, everyone talks about wisdom or searches for wisdom in one measure or another. And so James uh, delving into the idea of wisdom, uh, it's nothing new, nothing strange. All right? uh, but what does he say about wisdom? How does he pivot wisdom? In, the, in verse 1, Uh, In the verse 13 that was read to us just now, uh, it talks about two uh, words uh, used by James, right? Understanding and wisdom. And for James, uh, the word understanding is a focus on intellect and factual knowledge. But wisdom is a focus on practical, real-life use of moral reasoning. In other words, it is not just accumulation of knowledge. It is not just knowing how things work but it's being able to uh, practically apply right, what we know uh, into our everyday life and more importantly, how we apply good morals, or good uh, life living uh, in our everyday life. In verse 13, then James suggests, a truly wise person will demonstrate the, futil- the humility of wisdom by his good works. The true test of God's kind of wisdom is a life well-lived, a life spent doing good works for others. 
And we see in this uh, commentary on James 13 that uh, it is very in line with the whole book of James. The whole book of James says faith without works is dead, all right? Uh, it's not enough for you to believe, uh, you have to live, you know? And so James says that uh, even in the area of wisdom, all right, it's not just knowing, but it's living. And if you read through scripture, if you study the, the Jewish uh, way of life, you realize that much of the Jewish way of life, uh, it is not just a, a, a cognition, all right, but it is uh, actually a living out of uh, what they believe and what they state. J.I. Packer, a very well-known uh, author, Christian, says, Wisdom is the power to see and the inclination to choose the best and highest goal together with the surest means of attaining it. Right? So the power to see and the inclination to choose. And that is our wisdom. Right? You are able to see what is right, what is wrong, the good, the bad, and then to choose correctly. And for us as Christians, it is really a choice between uh, worldly wisdom, godly wisdom. And scripturally, uh, we put it down as a choice between the narrow path or the broad path. And James delves into this matter a bit more. With regards to uh, worldly wisdom, right? we read it in James chapter 3, uh, verse uh, Verse 14, if you have bitter jealousy, selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. The wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, and demonic. Worldly wisdom will generally, right, generally define success in terms of financial stability, professional achievement, personal fulfillment. How many of us as parents, when we think in terms of our children and what we want for our children, says, uh, okay, la, no need to go to school, la, you, know? all right, you can do anything you want, all right? no need to study, all right? no need to pass exam, you know? uh, just relax, la, enjoy life. All right? okay? None of us will do that. We strive for them to uh, be the best that they can be. And even for ourselves personally, when we enter into our lives and our careers, we strive right, to give our, our family the best, our children the best. We strive to do the best we can at work and climb the corporate ladder. And even in the area of personal fulfillment, we want the best for us. The idea is that the successful person is the one who knows what they want and will get it in the end. Right? So that's the general uh, sense of uh, the world and what the world believes to be good, right, and successful. Um, before you get the wrong idea, and before I continue this, my friend, uh, I'll come back to the idea that there's nothing generally wrong with this. Huh? All right? Just hold your horses on that for a moment. All right? But we've got to talk to the bad before we talk to the good. Because in this passage of Scripture, right, uh, it goes on to talk uh, about the negative aspects of God worldly wisdom. A commenter on the, this passage of scripture on verse 14 and 15 on the idea of the successful person in worldly terms says this, the problem is that such an approach to life is usually built on envy. I want what they have. It implies that there is a benefit to selfish ambition. I will do whatever it takes to get that for myself. Uh, most of us here, I take it, are not envious or selfish in your ambition, right? But we do, right? We do uh, slip into it very unconsciously, right? How many of us don't say that we want what somebody else has, you know? Uh, that person got an A, I want an A. That person managed to get into medical school, I want to get into medical school. Right? That person managed to get a good job, I want to get a good job. That person got a pretty wife, I want a pretty wife, you know? A submissive wife, whatever wife, you know, you can, you can add on all the adjectives, right? But, but we want, right, what is before us. Right? And James warns, right? James warns us in James chapter 3, verse 16, where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and evil and every evil practice, right? The world 
will teach us to do anything and everything we can to get what we want, right? To make ourselves, to make our targets, right? To push, you know, right? And sometimes in the course of that, my friends, we can really uh, fall over the edge, right? And we can do all the wrong things and all the evil things. And the reason why in James it talks about is earthly, right? It is natural, it is demonic. Uh, the reason for that is because when we go down this road, the devil happily comes alongside to fan the flames, right? To move us in the wrong direction, to stir within us the wrong feelings and the wrong senses, the, the envy, right? The, the selfish ambition. The devil is happy to come and stir that in our lives. My friends, I, I'd say that, you know, generally, right? Generally, uh, there's a direction people go. Generally, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be success. And so we need to talk a little bit about what it means to be ambitious, right? If you know this passage of Scripture in James, it talks about selfish ambition. It doesn't talk about ambition. It talks about selfish ambition, Okay, envious right, of others. Uh, the word ambition comes, uh, has its roots from the early uh, Roman days and Roman politics, when the Roman politicians go around canvassing for votes, right? And when they were canvassing for votes, you know, the word ambitio in Latin is to go around, right? To go around. Uh, as time went by, because they were canvassing for votes, votes, they were canvassing for authority, position, then it becomes uh, to carry the meaning of a desire for honour and for power. Later on, this Latin word made it into the English language and uh, in the Middle Ages, right, it became uh, broadened, the understanding was broadened to include admirable desire for advancement or improvement. Still later, the object of this desire. Uh, you know that the starting point is, is an admirable right, advanced desire. Right? So ambition itself, to have, a, to have a vision, to have drive, to have a goal, uh, nothing wrong, good in and of itself. But when it is coupled right, with uh, wrong emotions, bad emotions, wrong feelings, envy, selfishness, then it goes off the rails and it leads us into trouble. And again, the devil is very happy to come alongside in that regard and keep us going in the wrong direction. Wrong envy, selfish ambition, my friends, uh, is also to be found in our own context in the church. But before that, James says that how each person answers the question of what is wisdom depends on whether their focus is limited to this life or includes eternity in heaven. In other words, where and, and on who and on what are our eyes fixed on? Are our eyes fixed on God, the honouring of God, heaven, or are our eyes fixed on what we want to achieve in our own life, our personal fulfilment for our financial security? In our own context, uh, Oswald Chambers says this, As Christian workers, worldliness is not the trap which most endangers us, nor is it sin. The trap we fall into is extravagantly desiring spiritual success. Never seek after anything other than the approval of God. Unless the worker lives a life hidden with Christ in God, he is up to become an irritating dictator instead of an indwelling disciple. Right? We can be swept up as well. You know? uh, I want all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to be able to speak in tongues, to prophesy, to heal. Why? You know, because I want to be recognized. Right? I want to be recognized as an apostle of the Lord. Right? I want to be recognized by the people of the Lord. And you know, truly, Right? Uh, envy, selfish, worldly ambition can easily slip into us as Christians and our Christian church and life as well. What, did, what God desires of us, James teaches us, is to desire godly wisdom. Right? Godly wisdom is first pure. And pure, uh, if you break down the word in Greek, right, it means undivided, it means chaste. 
And I suggest to us that it means committed, being committed to God and to God alone and to whatever the Lord calls us to. Now, the call is for us to be peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and of good fruits. And here, the call is for us to be committed to be peacemakers rather, rather than rebel rousers or rioters or people that stir up trouble, you know. You know, we, we know our people, right? You plong them in any situation, family, friends, work, community, and somehow or other, right? Within a while, the, the community, that friendship will break, you know. They just have a way of uh, causing division. Whereas the Lord's call upon our life is to pull people together, right? bring community together, bring about peace. The call for us, godly wisdom, is to be unwavering and without hypocrisy. And here is a commitment to righteous living, uh, without thoughts of currying favour of others, right? to, to walk the straight and narrow, trusting and believing in God. My friends, in order for us to live out this godly wisdom, and remember James' call for us is to faith without works is dead, right? Knowledge without action is dead, right? The call for us is to live out the life of Christ. In order for us to be committed, undivided in Him, to, be, to seek peace rather than to be rebel rousers, to live righteously, it really requires a surrendering and a dying to ourselves, right? trusting in His provision. It is amazing how much easier and more pleasant life becomes when a Christian gives up the requirement of getting what he or she wants at all costs. Without that agenda, there's less and less need for conflict. And yet, the only way to give up that agenda is to believe that our good God is providing all we need in every moment. We give up striving, right, for financial security, for personal fulfillment, for whatever. When we learn to rest in God, when we learn to surrender our lives into His hands and rest in Him, trust in Him, believe in Him that He has a plan, a purpose, a way for each and every one of our lives, and He will make it come true, right? He will make it come true. All of us live lives with uh, great uncertainty at different times. We cannot control things. Uh, I'm counting down to my retirement. You know, and one of the great questions people always have to me now is, what are you going to do? Uh? You know? you know, and I'll tell you for about a year or for longest of time, I, I, I was very troubled by that question. What am I going to do? Really, you know, what am I going to do? After I retire, what am I going to do? You know, I don't know. You know? And of course, the operative in people's mind is still young, wah, can work, you know, still young, wah, can do this, can do that. Right? Right? Recently, I've come to a conclusion of what I'm going to do. I'm going to retire. Lo. <laughs> retire, eh? Ma do anything, man. You know? <laughs> you know? Retire, retire. You know? right? okay. The only thing I have on my agenda to do upon retirement is I must exercise. You know, I, I must keep myself fit. You know, that's it. You know, the rest of it, God's hands, and God will take care of it. Right? My friends, uh, every step of the way, right, in the early part of our life, late part of our life, middle part of our lives, we will face times of uncertainty and challenge. Right, trust and believe in our Lord God Almighty. Uh, let me end with this uh, little story. It says, Colin Burnsmith of Australia told of a missionary who, call, was called, uh, uh, who called on a tribe of cannibals. I mean, he went to visit, he tried to evangelize right, this tribe of, uh, of cannibals. Right? It was back in those days where they literally do eat people. Huh? Right, so this missionary, taking his life in his hands, crossed the, the inlet in a small boat, and when confronted by the tribe, meekly endured every insult, right? So he meekly endured every insult. They curse, swear, why are you here? Pop, 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 pop. He just swallow. Long afterwards, when he had succeeded in converting many and establishing a church among these cannibals, he asked, 
Why did you not eat me when I came to preach to you? Right? Why do you not eat me when I came to preach to you? So the old chief, uh, now a Christian, said, Well, you see, none of us wanted to eat you because the reason we eat people is to acquire their skills and bravery. But no one wanted to be like you, taking all those insults, patiently bearing every blow against you. You know, talk about counter, uh, you know, counter wisdom, right? Okay. Uh, the wisdom of the world says we have to show strength. All right, we have to show people that we are not weak. You know, the wisdom of the Lord, all right, says is to bless, to be peacemakers. Okay, and the Lord will make a way for us. Let's bow our heads, my friends, and pray. We pray, Family Father, for discernment. To discern that thin line that separates between uh, worldly wisdom and godly wisdom, between uh, good ambition and selfish ambition, right? between living for ourselves and living for you. We pray, Father, for wisdom and discernment to, to know that line. And having discerned that line, we pray, Heavenly Father, for courage, for trust and for faith, Lord, to choose your way, to choose the godly wisdom rather than the wisdom of this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.